I wanted to talk to you guys today about motor theory and it has to do with a gravity flyer in this way. Some people are using DC motors and then some people are using the brushless DC as the PC fan. Now there is a difference and there's a reason why Alexa used one versus the other. And I'm going to bring you through a series of tests today and relate things to you so that you understand them a little bit better because we really need a deep dive into this issue. We had a chat last time when the group got together about the motors, the motor speed. Is it the camera causing it to look like it's going in reverse? Is it an action of the motor? What is it? I can tell you the quick answer is probably all of the above. It's going to be the motor being very weak. It's going to be that it does go in a little bit of reverse. Is the camera speed a little different? Yeah, it is. But there's a reason for everything. And that's what I'm going to bring you today. I'm going to go step by step through this and explain why things work. And I hope when we get done with this video, you can start seeing this problem like I do. This is Gerard Morin. He's going to talk about the sound that magnets make when you turn on a brushless DC motor. Please understand this is part of our gravity flyer and the harmonics. I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to, to hear it. All I'm going to do is put the power to okay you heard that that motor have nothing absolutely nothing in it and i challenge any rc player out there to take one of those parts the top that they come apart and the only thing goes from those wire is the wire of the stator he's got nothing else there to make music and when you remove the drum out of it, you put the power back into it, and there's no sound coming in. So those magnets, they're the one who are actually vibrating at high pitch. Voltage on magnets produces a sound. This is where our harmonics are coming from. Now, let's move on to the motors themselves. How do we want to run them? What's the concept behind them? And what's going to alter the motor the most? Let's listen to Gerard Morin and his view on how to run a motor. This little, this little guy there, like 1500. This is a lot of people using 1500 RPM motor. It runs on nothing. When I mean nothing, let's see if you can see this. Point. 0.6.7 of an amp. Tell me any type of motor who's got that kind of torque and stuff like this will turn for that little little bit of an amp. When I have the choke on it, I will not get it more than two, two and a half amp. Right? I have a half a half horsepower uh, electric motor pump at 3400 RPM in my pump from that because I'm on the well here, right? And when you put the meter on it, that pump, it runs on 11 amp for half a horse. 11 amp. This thing can turn my pump 10 times better than that because I can turn faster and get more flow out of it, more pressure, for a fraction of 11 amp. So let's start to make sense of this. More volts, less amps. Why would that be important? Well, it has to do with how things are manipulated with extra energy. If you use a static volt and you want it to increase your motor, you need lower amps. The amps themselves will drive right through that process and not allow that speed up to happen. So when we do this, we need to add more volts. So what does that mean? We're putting in our high voltage, right? So our high voltage makes the static bolt on the plate. The static bolt goes up through any part you have, regardless if it's plastic or not, and it'll get into that motor and increase the speed. We need that on that bottom disc to get it to move faster, because right now it's not fast enough. This is the understanding of going from PC fans that suck to put in this thing because they don't move very fast, to how they speed up. Now let's take our knowledge and look at Alexi's gravity flyer and see what the readings are of the RPMs of the motors. Thousand. 
1,270. The lower one. I'm not in any way saying that you can't use regular brushed DC motors or that PC fans with their brushless DC motor is better. What I'm trying to get you guys to understand here is that there's an energy transfer happening and it's easier to manipulate the PC fan than it's ever going to be the brushed DC motor. But if you take that into account in your build, it's absolutely no problem. Just be aware that it's there. This is the Lexi's Gravity Flyer. Focus in on that bottom disc right now. Look how slow it's moving. Now we can say this is frame rate, but judging from the motors that we put in this with the PC fans, that looks accurate. Now look, it'll speed up. There it goes. So again, the voltage is transferring from the top to the bottom with our high voltage or our static charge. It is now moving to the bottom. So you'll see it speed up and then you'll see it slow down. And when it looks like it stops, that's got to be the frame rate catching up with it. But the speed up and slow down are right there. By the way, I, I, I just love the space helmet. Sorry, I just me. I'm a fan. So, I don't know that I'd ever wear it, but I definitely like seeing it. There that motor is, it's speeding up again, look at it. You can see it speed up, you can see it slow down, it has to do with that PC fan and how bad it is. Now that you've learned about high voltage and what it does to motors, let's go ahead and look at the 3D printer aspect of this. This is going to take a little while, pay attention because it's going to be very important how everything works. So what are you hearing when you heard that? Well, you're hearing the harmonics in the 3D printer. You're also getting a resonance frequency in there. Let's distinguish the difference here. A lot of the sounds that you're hearing are going to come up multiple times. So we have to take it apart and look at which ones are commonly coming up and then which one comes up the most. The one that's going to come up the most is our resonance frequency, the rest of the harmonics around it. Now let's identify the exact frequency that there are. 155 hertz, 246 hertz, 272 hertz, 439 hertz, 586 hertz, 800 and 44 hertz. Which one comes up more times than any other one in this whole sequence? 439 hertz. So what's the significance of 439 hertz? Well, being that our actual frame of our 3D printer is aluminum, now it should start to make sense. What should be the resonant frequency of our Krabby Flyer? 439 hertz. Now understand, resonance will only occur when you get close to the resonant frequency. So, I'm off by about 10 hertz on our resonance frequency when I did this next test. I actually tested this at 426.6 hertz. And I thought it was just about right on. Well, it looks like I was just off by a little bit.
Now that we understand both tests, let's put it together. 439 Hz is our resonance frequency of our gravity flyer. It's the frequency of aluminum. It's what it resonates at. That is the commonality here. That's how we're going to figure this thing out. Now, will the harmonics change on our gravity flyer versus a 3D printer? Yes. But now we have in a solid method, a solid method, to pull this thing out of our gravity flyer. The only thing left to do is to get our gravity flyer to run and create the harmonics in it so that we can go ahead and graph it just like this. That's all it's gonna take. And then we have exactly what we need to go forward here. We know the exact frequencies we're looking for. We'll know the exact harmonics that we're getting and we'll be able to solve this puzzle once and for all. Today we looked into the high voltage on our disc and what it causes our motors to do. We also looked at a 3D printer and how it relates. Please understand this. We're going to take all of this information and apply it to our gravity flyer. And what we're going to find is we're going to reach a resonance points on our center disc. Now, what is that going to do for us? It's going to give us the first key of what we're looking for. We always talk about this when you get in a group about sound and what was Alexi listening for. Well, I could tell you exactly what he's listening for. I've already identified each part. Now, it's just getting everybody else to understand exactly what I meant. Hopefully today went a long way to doing that. Hopefully you can apply this knowledge. Maybe there may be some caveats in it that I didn't see that you might. That's okay, that's what science is for. We're always there to sh teach each other something and then be taught in return. This is a two-way street here. It's never one way and I understand that. Science isn't set in stone. It grows every time that you, each person looks at it. So, let's do this right. I hope you guys learned something today. I hope you guys liked the video. I hope it helps you in your gravity flyer. Anyway, if you like what you saw today, please like, share, subscribe. Do all those fun things. Comment all you want. I love to hear from you. And have yourself a great day.